I stand for open questioning of authorities. I stand for honesty, fact-based reasoning, and debate. I oppose all censorship, including hate speech laws. I reject name-calling and insults. I am Bill Warner. I'd like to talk to you about something I've seen in the news. In the state of Washington, in a prison system in Shelton, Washington, they have hired a new imam for the prisoners. But they've done more than that. They've also put, they put up on their webpage the state of the truth of Islam. I find this to be interesting because the government has now gotten into the business of theology and advocating for Islam. The first thing they tell us is, jihad does not mean holy war. Now, of course, what they're talking about here is that terrible beheadings that we see are coming out of the Middle East, and jihad does not mean that. Well, instead of listening to the state of Washington, why don't we listen to Bukhari, who is the Hadith collector? 21% of the Hadith by Bukhari do relate to jihad. And we go through those and put them into two stacks. One stack is cutting off Kafir's head, that is, the brutal jihad, and the other jihad is the inner jihad, the greater jihad, the spiritual struggle. Well, it turns out in the Hadith of Bukhari, only about 2% of the Hadith are about spiritual struggle as jihad, and 98% are about jihad as killing Kafirs. Now, as if that were not enough theology, the state of Washington tells us that the Torah and the New Testament have been altered. Well, this is late breaking news. Where do they get this information from? Well, the only place to get this information from is Islam, because that's what Islam says. But the Quran is pure, exact, perfect words of the only God of the universe. So here the state of Washington is telling us that the New Testament is corrupt and in error, and the Torah is corrupt and in error, but the doctrine of Islam is found in the Quran. It's perfect. And wading on through the theological waters, the state of Washington also tells us that Allah is the God of the Torah and the God of the New Testament. This is another version of we all worship the same God. As a man who's read the Torah and the New Testament and the Quran, I can tell you this, the image of God in these three texts is not that of the Quran. So the facts don't uphold this, but the state of Washington does. And here we come with some more Muslim Brotherhood teaching. Islam, Judaism, and Christianity are Abrahamic religions. Now this is pure Islamic doctrine. Now it is true that the Jews and Christians accept the same Abraham, but Islam does not accept the Abraham of the Torah. So therefore, there may be Abrahamic religions, but they're different Abrahams. Wading on through the theological waters, the state of Washington tells us that Allah is the God of the Torah and the God of the New Testament. Well, this is just a rehashing of we all worship the same God. The state of Washington tells us this. Now, men who oppress women are not following the real Islam. Well, you know, it looks to me like we'd find the real Islam in the Quran. And in Quran verse 4, 34, we discover that Muslim males can beat their wives. So is that oppression? I don't know, but it's wife beating advocated by Allah. You know, I went through the Quran and I divided all the verses that had something to do with women and put them in a stack. When you look at all the verses that relate to women in the Quran, 5% of them elevate the woman when she is a mother. 23% of them say that on Judgment Day, men and women are equal. But the remaining 71% will show how women are under the weight and authority of men. Let's look at the tolerance of Muhammad through something that he did. Some men came to him, converted to Islam, and he gave them the job of working with his camels. Well, it turns out they left Islam and stole his camels. Here's what tolerant Muhammad did. He had their hands and feet cut off, then he ordered hot nails to be put into their eyes, and then they were left on sharp, rocky ground to die in the blazing sun. They actually died from thirst. So that's tolerant Muhammad. Well, now that we've looked at the tolerance of Muhammad, let's look at the tolerance of the Quran, in particular verse 929. Those who do not believe in Allah and his messenger, even though they were given scriptures, that is, the Jews and the Christians, and who do not hold as unlawful that which Allah and his messenger have declared unlawful, following the Sharia, and who do not follow the true religion, fight against them until they pay the jizya, the tax, and are totally humiliated. So there's some tolerance of the Quran. Now they go further to say that the authentic Muslim community, I guess this means there are Muslim communities which are not authentic, does not support the extremism that terror groups practice, because they're not following Islam. 
So the state of Washington is telling those in Al-Qaeda, you're not real Muslims. They're telling those that are in ISIS, you're not real Muslims. Where does the state of Washington come off doing this? Oh, I know. They're just repeating what the Muslim brother taught them. Now, let's deal with this violence by Islam. Muhammad was involved in 95 jihad events over the course of his life. That's tolerance. That's peace. Here's the real tragedy. It's not that Washington is telling us that what the theology of Islam is and should be. They're just one of 50 states who've done the same thing. Here in Tennessee, for instance, a Republican governor brought in the Muslim Brotherhood to train law enforcement. And what did they teach them? Well, I have a tape of what they taught them, and they taught them the same things that we're talking about here today. Now, it's odd, because the state of Tennessee nor the state of Washington tries to force Christian doctrine or Jewish doctrine upon its citizens, but they do that with Islam. The real problem is this. Rational thought is called Islamophobia. What I'm telling you here today is called Islamophobia. I'm a bigot and a hater. Because facts become hate when a protected minority is offended. So and we become persecuted if we speak about Islam from the Kafir point of view, but only the Islamic point of view is allowed. You know, I was a teacher for a long time, and ignorance is easy to fix if you want to fix it, that is, you want to learn. But facts that offend protected minorities, they're called hate facts, and they, we remain ignorant because we're not allowed to discuss them. The universities won't discuss Islam, the churches and the synagogues won't. And look at our leaders. President Bush said, Islam is the religion of peace, and Obama practically changed the White House into a mosque. There's no way to deal with this. That is, a few people watch this video and go, this is terrible, but what do we do about it? We can't, don't seem to be able to influence the apologists, and what they do is to say we're bad people if we want to change it. The problem is not that the Washington prison system is an advocate of Islam, but the death of reason and the rise of totalitarianism. We're called upon by our government to submit totalitarianism, and we're supposed to call it tolerance. Well, listening to lies and not being able to speak about them, I can't tolerate. Thank you.